Okay, okay great. Tell me. <laughs> okay, so this student, uh, his question, of course, was on um, robotics. He was very interested. That's Christian coming in, and I'm going to mute him until he gets in. Okay. Keep going. Yeah. Um, so that student was very interested in robotics. He was in actually uh, another teacher that started at the same time I did taught a class on robotics, and he was in that class, and that was the only thing he talked about all semester long. Um, and in the in the multimedia project, he included um, you know that, that interview with Isaac Asimov, and he had uh, clips from iRobot, and he also had passages from the book that he was reading and including over the top of uh, some of those images of robotics from the military. Um, and so he was really able to get totally into that topic and see it from many, many different perspectives uh, and see how it's been used in movies, how it's been used in the military, how authors have written about it, and how it related to uh, the book that we were reading, the things they carried. Um, so th that's, that's how I designed that project to really allow students to uh, get into different layers of it. Um, and it, it worked great. Um, I would change, the only thing I would change is on Youth Voices, in addition to the video, I had them post underneath it their reflection. Um, so you can kind of read in the reflection um, you know, why they were including all these different clips. Because um, sometimes the clips, when you're watching, it's not really clear what they were getting at. But when, the, when you have the reflection there, it's really works really well. But uh, the only thing that I would change is that I didn't get in um, MLA uh, citations or anything, and that's part of the Colorado standard. So next year, in the reflection itself, I would have them cite, and so we can meet that part of the standards. Um, but other than that, I thought the project worked really good. And the students, uh, again, just totally got into it. Um, you know, a lot of times at that class, I was able to have the computer lab every day for the semester. It's normally a business class, but it was during that teacher's planning period. Um, and, you know, a lot of times in uh, classes like that where you're on computers all the time, um, you know, you'll look around and people will be doing whatever. Um, but when we were doing this project in the last uh, few weeks of the, of the school year, um, there were times when I would, you know, leave the room to go download something for somebody and I would come back and the whole room would be silent and people would just were totally focused on, you know, trying to incorporate their videos and get their point across. So I, I really, I was really impressed with how much the technology um, just made them get into it. Um, so I'm definitely going to do it again next year. Uh, are there so any questions the about taste of that project? Yeah, let's let's please please folks speak up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what I, have, I have an observation. Yeah, yeah. Hi, Chris. Good. Yeah, um, I mean, one of the things I notice is uh, this idea of uh, integration. You know, you're using a lot of different media and sources. Uh -huh. in your in your the first post we read, you know, it was like uh, something from a book, something from an article. Uh, and then we see in this latest uh, the video, we've got a lot of different sources being integrated. Um, are you doing that, would you say, on purpose? Or are the kids just finding those things and it's coming about naturally? Or it, It's funny. I think that's just part of the way that I think about things. Because in I don't really, in, wh with this multimedia project, I intentionally set out to have them include many different sources, the book, um, you know, an article, uh, various places that they've uh, found videos or interviews. Um, but I, I that just, I always tend to do that because I just think when people see more than one perspective, they uh, tend to get more engaged and to get a wider view of, uh, of the subject itself. And, and I find, you know, in, in high school, it's really easy to, uh, to see sort of questions as yes or no. And that's one reason I called this a postmodern uh, research uh, multimedia project was I wanted them to see that there are so many different ways to view everything and that there is no real yes or no answer. There's no, you know, oh, this is what robotics is all about. You know, you can only really say, well, this is what this person thought about robotics, but then this person thinks this. And so I kind of, I don't know, I think that's just part of my personal philosophy and the way I approach things. Other thoughts? What was your, what was your, um, Tommy? What was your criteria for the students as far as, uh, you know? And I use the term, I use the term grading loosely, but like, um, what, 
how how are they graded? I mean, how much did you focus on, you know, the research aspect of it? How much did you focus on grammar? You know, all, all, any of those things that you could include in it? Sure. I uh, well, most of my projects, this um, the the multimedia project, I ran out of time. It was just it was bigger than I thought it was going to be. But generally, what I do is I have them do a first draft and then a peer review, which is another reason I like a Youth Voices. I've got, um, if we have time, I'll show you a podcasting project I did, not on Youth Voices, but similar type concept. Um, and then after the peer review, a final draft. And so normally my grades are based on uh, improvement from the rough draft to the final draft. And then they have to meet certain criteria. Um, you know, like in the research, they have to have a citation um, and whatever the criteria is. Um, so that's kind of the way I approach it. I find it's the easiest for me to do and the easiest for them to uh, feel like if they're improving, they're going to get a good grade, you know? No, I understand. Are, are you still using Docs to start things? Or? Google Docs, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, I use Google Docs a lot. Um, and then the... Uh, you know, should we take a look? I would love to share this uh, podcasting project that I did with you also. And it's kind of got some peer review elements in it. Sure. Um, so I'll go back to the screen share. Let's see if I can find it. So was that one queued up? doesn't matter. We can get to it. Yeah, I've got it here. Cool. This one was a, uh, this was in my American Lit class. It was the first semester, so it was actually a different class because at semester we, all the students basically change classes um, than the one that did the multimedia project. Um, but it was a personal narrative and I put them all up as podcasts. So they would have their rough draft posted. You can see the rough draft for this one is here. And then at the bottom they would have their, their podcast of it. And so once they had gotten the recording done, and we have a set of uh, iPods, so they just use the iPods with microphones to do that. Um, then I had uh, students that were in a college level composition uh, and lit class do the peer review. So they would go in and read the rough draft and listen to it at the same time. So you get a really uh, much higher mm -hmm. level of engagement because when you hear it and read it at the same time, it's much easier to tell what people are talking about. Um, and so then after that, the students made their rough draft, made their final draft based on the comments that came through this peer review form, which is on a Google form. Um, you know, so it gives you everything in an Excel sheet, and then you just send it out to the students. Um, so after that, they created their final version, and we put the final version up as well. And so I've got the the whole class. Um, and the reason I chose this one to share with you is the final version. You can see you put in paragraphs and, and other things. But what I really like is this last line. This student says, um, this is absolutely positively, 100% factually, with no doubt in my mind, the longest paper I have ever written. <laughs> and again, it's, uh, for some reason, when you use technology and allow the students to kind of explore on their own some, they just, they get much more engaged. I've always had students that um, normally don't really produce anything um, will participate in, uh, in projects like this. And that's one of the reasons I really like technology a lot. So, uh, Tommy, I wanted to circle back on the um, multimedia project for a second. Yeah. Because um, you brought up the MLA citation issue. And sure. I, think it, I think it goes beyond that the questions that that project raises for me. Sure. Um, and, you know, there are lots of parts of that project that I love. But if I could say, the, the videos t tend to be, um, you can, s if you really spend some time with them, you can kind of see what the kid was, was putting together. Mm -hmm. And like you said, it needs the reflections. Right? Yeah. So, oh, you know what, here's what, here's what I thought. They're like collages, right? Yeah. They're, they're collaging together media from other places, and there's something wonderful about that. But there's also something kind of almost unfinished and needs a little more um, yeah. embedding or something. I'm not sure what it needs. But I just wanted to bring that up. It's, a, it's not just that they're not citing the sources. It's that they're using the sources in ways that we haven't taught them to use before. You know what I mean? Uh. 
There yeah, I definitely, I definitely agree, and I do think this is a this is a project that I want to work more with because um, I had I've, I've kind of was putting together a sample um, while the students were working on it, and in that one I was trying to um, you know solidify it a little bit more or make it a little bit um, more solid how the research was connected to what my topic was about. But I ran into the same problem that the students did, that you need something um, written down to kind of solidify it. And that's why um, the reflections are, are important and you can, uh, you know, get uh, that element, I think, included in the reflections on it. And, and related to all of that, I think, is um, on Youth Voices, some of them are 10 minutes long, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so um, my students looked at them and said, oh, those are really long, and yeah. didn't respond, right? Sure, so, yeah. So how, how to make a research project um, accessible to... You know, they need to be shorter, I guess, or they yeah. or something. And um, and an most question. of them. Yeah. Yeah, most of them. When I was going through, uh, you know, uh, looking at them at the end, uh, most of them would be improved a lot just by cutting it down on, you know, the length. And so next year, I was thinking when I did it that I would make it a requirement that they're, you know, maybe five minutes long max, something like that. Uh -huh. um, and, and then you would have more, because you would have uh, a little bit tighter uh, control on what was going into the actual video, you would have more focus also on what, why they were including that particular clip. And so it would be a little bit more related to uh, the research aspect of it too. Like I said, this was the, the first time I've ever done it, so it was a fascinating, uh, um, it, you know, process to go through. Absolutely. Um, and you've written about it very clearly on the, um, on the mission, and we can right. try it too. And that's the wonderful thing about Youth Voices, I hope, is that, uh, you know, we can try our own version of it, and you can yeah. see what we do, and you can, you know, we can keep building together. So yeah. thank you for putting that out there. Sure, there was, sure. There was a third project. Do we want to try oh, to yeah. get to that? Yeah, let's do it. Um, actually, there's two more projects that I'd like to share with you. One, <laughs> one that we did. Let me see if I can get this screen uh, cast thing going again. Screen share. Okay. Um, okay, this one is over here. Uh, it's called Book Drum, and it's this web page, bookdrum.com, that produces, um, you know, it's basically... It's not really a review, it's kind of like information that goes along with a book. And uh, we made one. My class made one for the book, The Things They Carried. And so they, they wrote this kind of introduction section. And then for they did these bookmarks. For each 25 pages, they would find things that happened or were spoken about in the book that they were unfamiliar with, um, like this P38 mm -hmm. can opener. There's the quote from the book, and somebody went and found a picture of it and described what that actually is. And they can include videos. Um, I think down at the bottom here, there's a, a video of a, of a geisha putting on makeup, because um, that was mentioned in the book. Uh, the quote is, a hospital with warm beds and cute uh, geisha nurses. Or geisha, I'm not sure how you pronounce that. Um, and so they do that for each 25 pages. And then they have a review. Um, they talk about the setting. Um, this is the region in Vietnam where the book happened, and this is there's uh, one scene that happens throughout the book about a river. Um, uh, that was the setting. Let's see. They also have a glossary, so any words that they find that they don't know, they have definitions of those. Talk about the author. Then there's an interactive map that has links to all of the various bookmarks that are map locations, um, and then a summary. And the whole class is working on the one book drum? The whole class, yeah, the whole class is working on it. So basically what I did was, actually I had a, I did the same thing with the Raisin in the Sun, kind of to get them ready for it. I just created a wiki, it's all in the same format though. And so they'd already done it once in groups, you know, so they kind of knew what the process was. But then when we were doing this book, sort of for each section of reading, they would have to turn in one bookmark and one glossary term. And then, you know, various students chose to do the author page or the review page or whatever. And um, and it was, they did well enough on it that they actually published it. So I was, I was really happy about that. Um, they did a great job on it. Um, and they worked 
you know, they got quite engaged in it, and they know a lot about the book now. I mean, there's a lot of bookmarks in there that I didn't know what they what they were all about. Um, so that was one project I wanted to talk about. And then the other one that we did on Youth Voices was this letter writing. Um, and it was with the same book, The Things They Carried. Um, and in The Things They Carried, the opening chapter is called The Things They Carried. And they the author goes through all of the things that the soldiers are carrying on their body in the war. Um, and it's, you know, all, all sorts Tell of me. various things. Yeah. So could you just read the mission? And oh, by sure. the way, and, and so, and, and if you're listening to this on the podcast, um, so youthvoices.net, and then go to missions, and you can find this description there, and the student yeah. work attached to it. Yeah, it's so under uh, literature and inquiry. Um, okay, so for this mission, we were using the short story, The Things They Carried, from Tim O'Brien's novel, The Things They Carried. This great lesson plan was developed by uh, Suzanne Rubenstein. The lesson plan and many useful handouts can be accessed at NCTE's Read, Write, Think website. There's supposed to be links um, embedded yeah. under there, but they didn't come through for some reason. I'll, I'll have to You sent that to me. I'll, that. I'll fix it. Don't worry. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Um, so she created this, and it's, it, was a, it worked great in my class. Um, first, the class spends some time discussing the things they carry every day. I ask where they traveled from to get to the class, and I also ask them what they carried with them on the journey. In their list, they detail things found in their backpacks, pockets, cars, purses, and wallets. Next, we read the things they carried, and students focus on Tim O'Brien's use of the list. We spend some time talking about the things the soldiers carry, and we consider the symbolic weight of these various things. We notice how they can be a positive or negative weights in concrete or abstract items. We go back to the list the students generated about what they carry, and they add anything they may have thought of while we're reading Tim O'Brien's story. Then we continue to discuss the objects on their list. What is the symbolic weight of the objects? Things that are more important have more weight, but each item will be different for each student. For some, the weight of their homework is heavy, something they think about all evening. For others, of course, homework doesn't signify any weight at all. These are personal stories which convey the weight of these objects. We also think about things they carry that are not concrete objects. Things like guilt, stress, love, family, memories, and pain all come up here. And we spend some time thinking about po both positive and negative weights. Next, students reflect on the list and, pack, eh, excuse me, and pick the three most important items. They free write for five minutes on those three items. For the next class, students will create a rough draft of a letter about the one item that they are most interested in writing about. Create a letter to the person that is most connected to that item. For example, if a student chooses to write about a class ring from high school, they will write a letter to the person that the class ring is most connected to. If they chose to write about a bracelet that a girlfriend gave them, then they will write a letter to the girlfriend in which they describe why it is important. This is an area that students sometimes struggle with, yet they must come up with a specific person to write to. A lot of times students will say, oh, can I write to, you know, everybody in the high school or something like that. And I say, no, it has to be one person. Um, the letter must contain a vivid description of the thing you carry, an idea of the weight of the thing you carry, a sense of whether this is a positive pleasure or a negative burden, an explanation of why you carry this thing, a story involving the thing you carry, and a clear sense of who the letter is written to and why they are connected to the item. So these are the required elements. Um, students sometimes have a difficult time coming up with a story related to the item. I often have to help them understand some of the elements of narratives in order to get a story included. If they put in some dialogue, blocking, setting, description, character description, or flashback, they will usually get on the right track. We then use the reader response sheet for a peer review and focus on revisions for the final draft. My final grades are usually based on improvement from the rough draft to the final draft and the inclusion of the elements of the letter described above. And then I have examples over on the side, and they, they really range quite widely. Like this one is really funny. A student wrote about a wallet. Then he, he actually writes to the boss of the fast food restaurant that he works in because he worked at the restaurant, he could afford the wallet. And then um, this one is really a heavy one. It's to his dad, and it's about his mother um, and, and her her death. And it was really you know, a heavy one to read. Um, the weight of words, she writes about a letter that she's carried around with her from a friend and, and how that's affected her. And, and it just r really ranges all over the place. And so it, it was another good project that uh, you get a you know, students can really go in many different directions with it. Very cool. Feedback, folks, or thoughts, or <laughs> what do you think? I, had I wanted to. Uh, no, go ahead. Fred, go uh, ahead. Welcome. Thanks. I, I had a question about the uh, multimedia project. Sure. It, it, 
I didn't really get to explore any of them, just the little moment that you shared there, but yep. is it essentially a, a series of clips, and, it didn't, and how exactly did they put that together? Is that yep, like we, using a, an, edit, uh, an iMovie editor or something like that? Yes, we uh, were in a, we had a computer lab for the whole semester for the class. And so that's why I was able to do a lot of these projects. Um, and we used, uh, in this class, we used Movie Maker, Movie Maker Live, I think mm -hmm. it's called. Mm -hmm. And um, they would just, um, they layered in audio. They had to record their own voice reading passages from the book that related to the topic. And they also had to include um, kind of how their understanding of the question they were researching had evolved through the process. Um, and then they had to share kind of where they gathered the information. They had to have kind of background music that related to the, um, to the question in some way or other. They had to find some media clips. It could be from movies or television or wherever they wanted. Um, it could be music videos that related to the same subject that they were working on. And um, I was really trying to get them to find many different uh, perspectives. It, all, it was really related to this book, The Things They Carried, which is a postmodern mm -hmm. book. So I wanted them to explore that concept that you know, there, there are many different ways of looking at the same research question, and I wanted them to, you know, share what they found, all the different various ways that they, um, that they learned about their question. And, uh, and like, I, like I've said before, it was uh, kind of the first time I did the project, so next time I'll, uh, I'll have some, some different ways of approaching it for sure. Um, but I still, I like the concept. I think it's, and I, I really think it's the way, you know, it's the way media works now. Um, so much of media is a compilation of different ideas and, right. um, you know, gathering information in that way is a, is a valid part of the world. I mean, my daughter is two years old and, and, you know, the way she goes on my smartphone with the videos of Sesame Street clips is amazing. So I just think that students today are so used to looking at the world in that way that if we can figure out some way to start harnessing that and start showing that that is a valid way of uh, approaching the world and of learning about the world, it's going to be to everyone's advantage. I wanted to mention a, a, a platform that I just discovered called WeVideo, WeVideo.com. Uh -huh. I just went to a presentation by them at Google. They've made a partnership with Google so that there, it's a it's a an online m collaborative video editing environment. Mm. Looks very powerful, and they've made an arrangement with Google so that it's part of your Google Drive. So, uh, I think this is really going to be a, 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 a open up a lot of possibilities for this kind of collaborative multimedia work in in the classroom. Oh, Fred, that sounds great. Absolutely. I, I've messed with that a little bit, though, and one caution is that um, it gets pretty costly really fast. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, that, yeah, it does. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, because they, they charge by minutes for uploading um, the stuff, and so, anyway. Well, not in, <laughs> just not in the caution. drive, not in the drive, and... Uh, they are exploring educational options that, well, good. that will get some of that cost down. So, good. Yeah, yeah that was I my que first question. <laughs> yeah, but right now it's like, uh, ooh, I have to pay all that to uh, upload this thing I just edited. And yeah, I was, <laughs> uh, wasn't so happy about that. But anyway, yeah, back back around a little bit to Tommy's work, and and I think if we could go around and just uh, get uh, comments here at the end. Um, that would be a really nice thing to do for Tommy, if you could just tell Tommy what you've been thinking about as you've been looking at his work. Tommy, thank you for sharing um, here tonight. Um, I'm going to start by saying that that um, description of the letter writing project um, was wonderfully written, and I could really follow your thinking and all that. Um, and then I want to revise it. Right, <laughs> but sure. I want to I want to keep that part, and then I want to think about how could we. It's like a genre question. How could we take his your description of your process 
and and make it into assignments that other people can do too. So that's, ah, yeah. that's some of the work that I want to play with uh, this summer. But yeah, but I don't want to I don't want to <coughs> de-emphasize at all the power of that that first narrative of how you how you had students go through this is really important. Um, sure. Thank you for that. Yeah. Other, other comments, uh, Valerie. Why don't we start backwards and start with you? <laughs> Just because you're all the way at the end of my list here. No problem. Um, Tommy, you have given me a, a lot of ideas that I hope I can make come to fruition. Um, I loved the research problem project, and I love the letters. And I say that, Paul, I think I'm thinking, too, because our literature is divided into time periods of genre, I'm wondering if I don't have the kids figure out what would be in the pockets or the purses or whatever of a character during a certain time period. You just have, you've got my wheels spinning, and I appreciate that because you've given me a lot to think about. And I am inspired by your good work. Oh, great. <laughs> Thank Not you. Um, just uh, turned off the. Uh, there you are. Yeah, yeah. and uh, so, uh, yeah, I was uh, thinking about uh, all of the research that you that you had the kids do and the variety of research, and I was thinking since uh, uh, my ninth and tenth grade classes, uh, I have to teach them how to do research, and. Uh, uh, you know, it's it's gotten me thinking about how I can uh, expand the types of uh, things, uh, types of sources that they can find, and uh, uh, how they can use them uh, uh, you know, in in more creative ways. Uh, one of the things that uh, uh, one of the questions that I had in looking at all of this is that, uh, you know, aside from not uh, citing the research, at, at, at some points, uh, looking at it as an outsider, I couldn't tell what was the uh, kids' ideas and what they borrowed from, you know, what, what, was, what came from the source. So that's something that I want to be able to work on. Uh, being able to have the kids uh, properly, you know, say, you know, I got this idea from somebody else, and this is my take on it, rather than uh, having them sort of presented as their own. Thanks. Yeah, that's a great point, hmm. Jeremy. <clears throat> well, you've definitely uh, I, the research the, the research part that you did was incredible because um, it's just kind of um, kind of cements a lot of things for me that we had discussions with at our, uh, our department meetings this year about what what does a research what does research look like for middle schoolers and you know doing a four to five page research paper is not the way to go um, you know and, and the main thing is is that they understand what is effective research it's not it's not pumping out a four to five page paper um, and you know and I really like what I'm seeing with, with what you did here with youth voices and it's just kind of cementing a lot of things with what I want to do with my kids next year um, with research. Um, and one of the things that I would encourage, because this is what I'm going to be doing next year, because I got it from one of my colleagues, is to have your students go back, and I think Paul had mentioned it earlier too, is reflect, have your students reflect on their pieces, um, because I think that's more powerful than anything when those kids can go back and look at their writing and say, and you know, and look at what, what was good about it, what was bad about it, and how they can make it better. So, but great job. So it gives, it gives me a lot of things to think about for the for next year. <laughs> Thank you, and that's and that's. Uh, and I just wanted to say that's. Um, but actually, both uh, what Jeremy said and Shantanu um, is, is a question that I've been debating ab about a lot. And uh, you know, I my students, I always feel like it would be great if they could write four to five page uh, research papers. And I do think they learn a lot about writing by doing that. Um, and I think next year what I'm going to try to do is to do this project earlier because I kind of did it at the end of the year. And I just ran out of space. Um, and so I would 
prefer to do it earlier in the year and then have that time at the end, you know, uh, for reflection and, and going through um, and maybe writing not five pages but uh, something to kind of uh, give it a little bit more weight and a little more heft as far as a uh, research paper goes. Um, yeah, that's a that's a that's a tough question because the student, a lot of the students that get involved in these um, technology and movie type projects, if I did a four to five page paper, they wouldn't turn it in. Right. And mm -hmm. so I don't know. I, I struggle with that because I I agree that it's an important thing, but I just I know for the uh, for some of my students that's not going to help them. So I don't mm -hmm. I haven't figured out the exact way to do it perfectly yet, but I'm going to keep trying until I do find out a great way. <laughs> <laughs> cool.